What is going on, people? Welcome. Johnny here. And today I'm going to do another image tutorial. This is intended for RimWorld, but you might get something out of it if you're doing or trying to learn how to do video game images for other games that are somewhat similar. So you can see here, I've made a research bench for my Empire mod that I'm currently working on. And I'm not at all happy with it. It needs to be redone. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do is straight away just go ahead and check my canvas size. This is 512 by 410. And you can see I have some other images up here. This is paint.net. And it looks like I want the south version. Eh. I don't know which one is which. What is this? <laughs> this is south. Okay, good. So this is the RimWorld vanilla texture for a research bench, a basic research bench. And canvas size is 320 by 256. Mm, that's a little small for what I want to do. So I think what I'm going to do is use one that's the same size as the one I had before. So canvas size here was 512 by 410. So let's do a new... 512, 410, there you go. Okay, now let's go ahead and get rid of that layer. All right, so as a starting place, where do we go? <laughs> Let me show you what else I have up here. I have the vanilla research tables. I also have their masks up. Um, for now, we're not gonna worry about that, but these are just up for size reference. One thing that really helps out a lot when you're making a new image, if you want to simplify your life, is if I copy the south one here, let's copy that layer, and go to the top here, make a new layer, paste it in, and then I'm going to resize it to see if the one I built before matches the placement of the core vanilla RimWorld research bench. So I'm going to hold shift, because that'll lock in my um, left, right, X, Y axes. They'll, they'll sync together. They won't move independently. If you don't hold shift and you try and do this, you get this where it gets all wonky. So I'm going to undo that, hold down shift, scroll it out until I line it up. So you can see when I made this image, I made it so that it was really close to what the vanilla one was. And that's literally just to make my life simpler. When I write the configuration, I can use some of the same parameters in terms of the size, and it's not going to muck things up. So that said, let's come over. I'm going to grab that image again. Actually, I think it's probably still selected. And I'm just going to make it fit the image by holding Shift and dragging it out and making it fit exactly. So this is going to be simply for size reference on my new research bench. I'm going to make it a little bit transparent by double clicking on the layer and muck mucking about with the opacity, just reducing it. Somewhere around 130 is fine. I'm going to save this off somewhere. Okay, there you go. So I'm going to just name it Empire Research Bench South. So what I've done, you can see I've made some other tables and I've sort of defined a style for how I want the Empire furniture to look. And I have a bunch of tables here that I made, but I have these one by two tables. You can see that up here. I'm going to use this one as my starting place. And I have the outline here, layer eight. No, nope, that is not the outline. <laughs> I'm talking out of my hind end. All right, this guy is layer eight. So I'm going to copy layer eight. I'm going to make a new layer here and I'm going to paste it in and then I'm going to drag it about just to make it bigger. What this is doing is fattening up the lines for me by default. So there, it looks like it lines up perfectly that way. It doesn't line up this way, but that's okay because we're going to cut this thing up, move things around. So what I'm going to do is just go and control X after I did a select and then I'm going to control V. Now, Right after you've pasted, you have the ability to use the arrow keys or the mouse to drag it around. So I'm going to move this around so that the lines on the side match with the vanilla item. So there you go. So that one's locked. So now if I move it, it moves everything. 
You could also paste these into new layers and deal with it that way. Everything's selected. That's control D to unselect everything. So now I'm going to select this side. That's control X. That's control V to paste it back in. And then I'm going to move this one around and I need it to line up with where I put my other one. So really one, one thing you can do, uh Oh, see, it's overlaying it <laughs> cheeky, right? There we go. So right there, we're lined up that way. So then we'll just keep going this way and that looks good. And then I'll control D to lock that in place. Next up, this bottom corner here needs to be grabbed. Control X, control V back to my little arrow keys, move it around. Now this one's a little different because you can see the bottom of the vanilla research bench doesn't exactly have the kind of detail. So I'm just going to eyeball it and make it look decent. Now that, looks you don't want to go too far outside the bounds but as far as we're going outside the bounds here i'm going to be comfortable going outside the bounds down here of where the original image lane so let's go maybe another tick right there i'm going to call that good and then we can kind of zoom in and see this looks like it's lining up fine so Control d to unselect everything that just leaves this last little section I should put the disclaimer out there right now that I'm not an image guy. I learned this stuff on my own just by doing it. And uh, I don't I don't really feel apologetic. So <laughs> if I suck and this is your your way above my skill level, that's totally cool. If you want to leave some comments as to how I could do things better, have at it. If you want to complain about it, that's fine too. I don't really care. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go to my line tool and I'm going to go to black. And I'm going to, just in case, I'm going to put this over. So you can see something's not matching up here. So I'll make it a little bigger, a little bigger. Perfect. And what we need to do then is make them butt up. So the reality is it's not perfect. And now you might say, well, shit, what do I do about that? So we can make this a little smaller. No bueno. We can do maybe 5.5, maybe 5.8. 2.5, nothing. The shit ain't working. <laughs> like, I can't make these lines look right. So you can ask yourself if at this level it makes any difference. And the answer is clearly no, it doesn't. You can let it go. Or you can delete your layer. And you can go back to the layer you were working from. And you can take a copy of this. Control C. Control V, move it down, fill it in. Look at that, perfect match. Control D to unselect. Control V to paste in that same section again. There you go, now it looks perfect, right? Now we can come to this side and really we just need to control V to paste again. Now does it match? Let me unselect. Mm, not perfectly. <laughs> so... We'll just uh, undo that whole situation. And this is really just being nitpicky. Like, but all you really need to do is copy the section over here and then paste it in. And then it will match exactly. Again, like you, I could have just went with it from the get-go and nobody would have been the wiser, I'm sure. But for the sake of we're doing this, we want it to be as good as it could be I'll go through the effort and I'm gonna be a little long-winded but the intention is to get people to be able to duplicate this themselves so I'm literally just going around control C control V drag it around all right look at this I boned it up these don't touch <laughs> and you can eyeball this side which one looks better I'm gonna err on the side of caution and make this one go up a little bit so really you just have to go like that well hold on first you have to unselect the reason it did that is because i have add union selected so really i want to go back to replace my selection select this control x i'm going to make a new layer now and i'll show you why in a minute and now this just needs to go i'm going to use the up arrow boom one spot so the reason i made a new layer is because you get these little overlays 
And while they don't, they do show up, you can still see it right in there. So really all you have to do to get rid of that is be on the layer you just pasted. Select that one crappy line that's out of place. Boom. Get rid of it. All right. There you go. So that's going to be the outline of our table. Now, we can come back to this image that I had previously made and see what we want to grab from here as well. So one thing I know, and I didn't name all my layers because I'm lazy, but you can see I have layer 12 here, and layer 12 affects the legs on this table. So if you're looking at the legs, you'll see my shading is there. So I'm just going to copy layer 12. I'm going to come back to my new layer. I'm going to merge all this stuff down into a single layer. I'm going to paste or make a new layer, put it underneath my outline. Then I'm going to paste. Now, uh-oh, look at that. It's like totally the wrong size. <laughs> so if you remember, when we pasted our layer in, we had this corner lined up. And then we held down shift while our selection tool was on. And we dragged the corner out until it touched this line on the far right. So if I do it like that again, all right, you'll see that matches. Now, one thing it did is made it kind of blurry. So it's not really doing what we need it to do. Like we probably won't be able to use this cheap, quick shading method <laughs> because the original image is a smaller that we're trying to essentially recreate in a slightly different size and shape format is the wrong size. Let's go see our camera. So it's 300 by 225. So it's just too small. You can't stretch it up and make it look right. So, so much for that. So we're just going to have to wing it on the shading. We'll have to do the shading from scratch. Now, one thing we can hopefully pull is this little detail line I have going through here. And layer eight here clearly has that. So I'm going to copy layer eight. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to paste it in. I'm also going to go ahead and delete the background layer because we don't need that anymore. And, uh-oh, see, <laughs> so it still had that area selected and I tried moving and it was on the wrong layer of selection. So it moved some stuff that I didn't want to move. So I did a quick control Z to undo it, move the layer I want. So what I'm going to do is make this guy bigger. I'm going to drag it all the way over so that it lines up like this, like we did for our first image which was the outline when we first brought it in. All right, now you can see it looks a little blurry. It doesn't look as concrete as we'd like it to. So I'm gonna duplicate it, then I'm gonna merge down. And either we can redraw this line or we can go with it. Now let's go look at what the quality, see the quality on this one's really good. How about some of these other tables I made? Hmm, interesting, right? So. <laughs> This is one of the other tables I made and it looks it looks pretty good. So I think I think I'm going to go with it here and just see where it ends up. If it sucks, you know, you can always change it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the control X, control V after selecting this corner over here. Then I'm going to use the arrow keys to push it out where I think it was going to look good again. There's no real rhyme or reason. The only thing I'm shooting for in this is to have it roughly equivalent here and here. You also have to consider RimWorld perspective is typically from the bottom of the image. So if it's a little closer on top, that's okay. I think that looks good. I'm going to go with that. And then we're just going to continue doing that as I did before. Control X, Control V, move stuff around. One thing you don't really get here is a way to perfectly line it up. And you can like scoot it over with the arrow key until... It looks right, and that looks like it's right on track. One direction, <laughs> in the up-down direction, those lines are lining up. So, just scoot this one over till it looks good, and then you gotta kind of zoom out and just eyeball it. You don't want to hit Control D to unselect. You can kind of use these little squares as a guide as well, but you see, like they don't line up in the same position. But it's close enough. I'm gonna go with it. It's fine. All right, now, next, this guy. 
and then that was control Z to cut. And then I'm going to paste. I could almost make my life a little easier and select it a little close to the edge, a little closer to this edge so that I can perfectly line this up this way. But you can also eyeball it the way I'm doing. I'm just scooting it around with the arrow keys. There's no like, oh man, this has to look perfect. Like it'll look fine when it's done. <laughs> One thing about RimWorld art is it's generally pretty pretty basic stuff, right? So so what I was talking about before is if I select like this and then I control X, control V, now I can actually just move this thing around because I know I can line it up perfectly like that. Using the arrow keys does you a favor because and now I know if I don't hit left or right, then it's lined up with that arrow or with that with that one over there, which I did hit left or right just to see if I could get lined up over here. But we're going to see if we can't get it close. If we need to move this one again later on, it is what it is, right? And I suspect I'm probably going to have to because <laughs> it's too much to eyeball that. But whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did before where I select this zone, control C, Control V to paste it in. And we're just going to fill in that. Then we're going to come down here and do the same thing. Control C, Control V. Fill in these lines. Control V again. Drag it over. And when you unselect, you're all everything you're playing with is on the same layer. So it's not really going to go anywhere. It's just going to essentially merge it down to the layer you're working on. So Control Z. Control, control C, Control Z over here is all I'm doing. And did we nail it? Look at that, we did, boom. And over here, same thing, but last freaking time. I should have done it a little bigger because then you have to pace less times and that saves you a little bit of time. I'm trying to do this somewhat fast. I know this video is probably boring to most people. <laughs> so if you don't watch it, that's okay. Or if you give up now, that's fine. All right, so now what we have is like the basic outline for our design that goes into the table. So if we come back over here, you'll see there's a line here. And one thing we need is if you look at layer 10, it's giving me that extra layer of detail there. So let's go ahead and grab that, and we'll make a new layer, and we'll paste it in. And I'm going to do the same thing just to get some consistency in my lines and drag this till it touches that edge. Now we're going to bring this down and you can see it's overlaying my outline layer. So this one needs to be underneath. Then I'm going to probably bring it down a little further even. Really this distance and this distance need to roughly match up. One other thing I should do here is duplicate and merge down because that's what I did before to get these lines as dark as they are. So I duplicated that layer, merged it down. All right, I'm going to go to my selection tool. I'm going to control D to make sure nothing is selected. And then I'm going to grab that dude. Control X, control V, drag it over here. And I'm just going to eyeball it once again, make sure it looks roughly right. I need some space down here to add some shading. So I think, I think that'll work. And then I'm going to have to move this one up a little bit because as you can see from this side, something that looks too far, something like that. Okay. So now we're going to grab this, doing myself the favor of grabbing it right on the edge so that when I paste, I can just drag it over, overlay. Ah, see, look at that. We totally missed our spot. Control D. So I'm going to grab this side because I kind of like the distance over here better. I'm just going to do this. Control X, Control V, arrow key up, done. There we go. I'm going to I'm going to push this outline underneath my main outline layer, my main table outline layer, and then I'm going to merge those two together. So, there you go. What else do we have here? So we have shading. One thing that's off on this image it's these lines right here and right here should not be black. So what am I going to do about that? 
when we do shading, we'll tweak this and fix it is essentially the bottom line. Now, Empire in Warhammer, all about the skulls. Now, if we try and steal the skull, which I essentially hand traced and drew and made, and where's it at? It looks like it's, there's some other ones here, but this looks like, there actually looks like there's a few of them. So there's an outline to it just to make it stand out a little bit. And then there's the skull layer itself. So if we grab that, make a new layer, pop it in there, mm, it's so tiny. If we make it bigger to the same degree that we we're making other layers bigger, I'm holding down shift as I drag this to keep my perspective the same or my ratio is the same between X and Y. Look, it still looks pretty crappy. So one thing you can do is just select just that bit and then go back to your, what is this tool called? Move Selected Pixels tool. And then you can drag it around a little more easier without having to drag way out on the sides of your image. But we lost so much detail there. So in those situations, sometimes you can muck about with an enhance like photo where do we find it? sharpen maybe Let's see if we can make it look halfway decent mm, yeah it's a maybe like I'll leave it there for now I'm just gonna turn it off and mark it skull definitely need some skull so we could also pull some designs these designs were taken right off the internet <laughs> as you can tell and then I just added a couple emboss features i just really messed around with effects until i got it to look good but i believe this was an emboss effect that made these other tables look that way i kind of like this one i might end up using that one but for now we need to worry about shading so let's grab our selection tool make sure our tolerance is set to 70 and let's come down here to this table leg okay we're going to make a new layer Put it underneath all the other layers because your shading always goes underneath all of your outline and these kind of detail layers. And we're going to figure out what kind of grays we want to use. So for the legs, let's go look at our example. See, we did darker from the bottom up. And this level of lightness is still darker than the tabletop. So I'm just going to wing it here. Let's go with... Uh, let's go with the darkest one in this available lot that isn't black. And then we'll rotate primary and secondary. And let's go... So this color is probably what I'll use on the tabletop since it's the lightest one available here. So let's go with this guy. Now I'm going to grab my gradient tool. A lot of people are going to be cringing right now if you know anything about RimWorld images because gradients are kind of a bad thing <laughs> for the style of image but it's just how I do it you could just fill it with one color do what I did to the sword where you add a lighter shade at the top and then feather it a, light, a darker shade at the bottom and feather it and call it good but I'm going to do a gradient because that's what I like to do now I think this should be a little bit lighter up here so I am going to end up going Ooh, to see that's way too light no I can't do that that one right there boom all right, so then I'm going to hit enter to lock it in place. I'm going to hit control D to unselect it. I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to scroll over so I can see the other leg. And then I'm going to go to layer, flip horizontal. And you'll see, because when we started, this image was right in the center. It literally just built in that one as well. Pow. So I'm going to merge that down. That's the shading on the legs. Done deal. Let's go back to our selection tool. Select the tabletop, go back to underneath all of our outline and detail type layers, and let's go pick a lighter color. So we're going to take the lightest one available over here that isn't white, and something kind of mid-range for the dark. Maybe we'll stay the same. We can kind of muck with it after the fact. And I'm going to do a gradient. I want the lighter in the front, so you can clear I, I right clicked on that one. That was the wrong route to go. So now I'm going to do it with the left mouse button. And one thing that's a little irritating there <laughs> is that you can see that layer color I used to make that detail line design in the table is too light. So you can like 
go up with it like this until you can kind of see it in the back. Or you can just leave it light. Like, let me go see what I did on these. Yeah, it's definitely darker on those. What about on these guys? Okay, so what that's telling me is I need to drag this way up so that this line here stays darker than my background. And I'm going to keep going up. That looks pretty good. So I think I'm also going to make my light color lighter. Just a, just a tinge. There we go. All right, I'm going to hit Control D to unselect that. I'm going to save my progress thus far. There's a few other little things that this needs, right? There's some detail you can add just to kind of make things pop a little bit better. And there's this area up front here. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to grab my selection tool. I'm going to grab this area right here. So this is clearly not a part of the tabletop. This is the edge of the tabletop that cuts off and goes down towards the floor, <laughs> if that makes sense. This isn't a flat top surface. So what we're going to do is add a little bit of unique shading to that. And we're going to do the same style we did on this, where it's dark on the bottom, light on top. And you're really not going to get much out of it. You're just trying to draw some delineation here to make it look like it's something else. And if you can see the center looks good, then the rest of it will look good too. It's a little bit difficult to finagle with this tool. But you got to get you got to get by here. <laughs> and if you like, you know, you can see do all kinds of weird stuff, but that's that's not really a the point of this <laughs> anyway I've never actually shown people how I do this so all right so once you get it somewhere where you like it one thing you can do is just tweak out your colors so since my lines are so far away going to the extremes on the colors might make things look a little better I'm gonna go with that hit control D save that that looks pretty good like it's clearly not a part of the tabletop now we have these other little spots. I'm gonna make a new layer. Like here, we should see a little bit of, let's go back to our example image. You see how I have this? Just to add like, oh yeah, that should be actually the same, going the same direction as this down towards the floor. And then down here, we should have a little bit where we see this leg doing something a little different than the rest because there, sh there should be something there, right? So we can just create this new layer, select that little spot we want to add it to, go back to our gradient tool. Oops, wrong color. I want to alter the secondary to make it not so dark and grab my gradient. For this one, again, we're going to try light on top, dark on bottom. And you might say we want a little, well, so this distance here and this distance here, not including what I just put in, should be roughly equivalent. Oh, and these colors, no bueno. No, nope, that's not going to do it. So let's grab that dark color again because that looked good. Let's grab our light color, make it a little bit lighter. Let's see where we ended up. That looks fine, right? Like you can kind of see something's up over there. And the same thing for down here. So let's come down here, select mm, that bit looks fine. We're just trying to add some bit of interest. And on this one, we want the light part in the front. And then we want it to go back. Hit enter, uh, control D, I guess I'll just unselect. I'm gonna select what I just did copy paste drag it over here boom control D to unselect save my work so we've done this side satisfactorily one thing we want to do is fix this this black line shouldn't be here it's too stark to be in the middle of the table like that it really doesn't fit the flow of what RimWorld's doing some of you are gonna say yeah dummy you just used gradients and that doesn't fit the fit the flow either and to that I say you are correct <laughs> so what we're gonna do is this is a part of our main outline so I actually have to do that on a different layer so let's take that layer we just made because 
we can't do that other part without doing something to a different layer. So let's go ahead and duplicate the layer, go up to layers, flip, so it totally put it in the right spot because when we were doing this from the get-go, we knew our image was centered and in the right spot. So I'm going to merge those bad boys down. I'm actually just going to merge a bunch of these things down because uh, that's A-OK -okay at this point. So I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to push it way to the top. This needs to be over our outline. So now when I draw over here, oh, snap, look at that. So we're trying to just make this line not so stark. So I just drew a line over it. I'm leaving that line selected. We're above the main outline layer. And I just want to pick a color where this looks looks better. <laughs> so I'm literally just going to kind of futz around here. And one thing you can do is just draw a line or two like that and maybe pop another one in underneath it and vary it a little bit like that. Hit enter to lock it in place, effects, object, feather. See if the feather can maybe fix our day. Not so much, like we're still ending up with some weird stuff. And that's because this line and this line are still too stark. So I'm going to continue doing what I was doing. We really just need to lighten up all these layers. And I know, you know, another trick is just like draw them all in various shades and then lock them in place and then go over here and mess with your opacity as well. So like, mm, now we might be getting somewhere. So that looks pretty good. Let's go look at it from out here. So it, one, one problem with that is it all doesn't like flow and this line is too dark as well. <laughs> so, so I don't know. Sometimes you try shit and it doesn't work and that's okay. What did I do on these tables? Aha, look at this. <laughs> See, I just did one dark line to let you know, hey, there's a transition here. And then it's actually not a part of the main gradient. Interesting. So I guess the moral of the story is just figure it out, right? <laughs> So we can start over here. How does this line look there? Okay, so I did leave that like that just for some visual difference. That's okay. So let's go with that. So I did, I think, delete that whole layer, and this is an all-new layer that I'm just going to start screwing around on here. Um, yeah, that looks okay. I'm going to make this one lighter. I'm just going to literally drag this line around until it looks okay. You don't really want to draw attention to the fact that you did some repair work over here. <laughs> FYI, that's really once it's in game at the scale that you see it in game, it doesn't matter. Like no one's ever going to notice that. One thing you do lose is all your nice little weird overlays. Part of the issue was the way I created this outline by dragging it like that. It made it big thick and like it's got all these half shaded layers in the sides and that's just a big bloody hassle so i think on the other ones i had a layer here we're gonna have to cover up this black line over here too there's no way around it this is not a problem i've encountered before <laughs> but hey you just have to figure it out you have to improvise sometimes so i think we'll call that because it's where this line jumps over ends I guess we'll say that'll be my like darker delineation line and then this we can start going lighter with then and just hit the up arrow to go lighter here so I don't know it's all literally just doing it seeing how it looks sometimes doing it again and again like a hundred thousand times I do want these to be light and then we'll just kind of fade it down had we just like drawn this from scratch from the get-go, we wouldn't have had all these problems. So now this is telling me these are too dark. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to hit control Z a few times to activate that previous line that was too dark. Mm, I want a little bit of variation. So let's see where we end up. Nope. No, sir. Not going to get it. All right. We'll just, uh, we'll just blend it up. That's fine. 
All right, and done. How does that look? Kind of like shit, right? Like even from out here, you can still see something's a little bit off in there. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my color selection tool. So some of these lines are opaque. So you can actually like come down here and grab this and take your drag tool or your line drawing tool. Sometimes I'll actually draw these in like one pixel at a time too. Yeah, that's not too bad. I should have a slightly lighter color for this. Then it would look like perfect. Why does, if you have one pixel, why is it jumping into other pixels? That's a little frustrating, but hey ho. All right, there you go. I'm, I'm going to, oh, this section needs some love. Oh, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> okay, now we're all over the board. As you can tell, and as was promised, I'm not a graphics dude. I'm literally just figuring this stuff out as I go. I shouldn't have done that last one. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to do a layer, flip horizontal. That's going to push it over here. I'm going to merge those two layers down. So that gives me both those. If I turn it off, you see both lines are there. If I turn it back on, it's covering both. Looks a lot better than it did. So that's like the main table. So at this point, I just need to figure out what do I want to put on here now? I have this other table I made with all these random research looking items that I also made. And uh, hey, look, here's a book. Okay, cool. These are going to go on top. All right, look at that. There's my book. Save that bad boy in. I have a pencil. I'm just literally going to paste this over. Oops, not on the same layer. Or it's going to disappear. Paste this stuff over from stuff I've done before that. I know it works. I have a hammer. Paste it in. I don't know what you're doing with a research hammer. There's a beaker. Some of these things, the perspective's a little skewed. Like the beaker's top down. The book's top down. But like, I didn't know how to make some of this stuff look so good top down. So, <laughs> like these scales. Oh, not that new layer. Always make a new layer. At the very worst case scenario, you can just merge them down later on. Mortar and pestle. Beautiful. We're definitely going to need a mortar and pestle on a research bench. Now look at that. All I really got was the green crap that's in the mortar and pestle. Oh, it says mortar and pestle stuff. So what I'm going to do on this image is merge them down, copy, unmerge. Because I don't want to mess up that original image. So layer 12, we don't want. I'm just going to paste over it. And I did. And we'll just stick the mortar and pestle, I don't know, f here for now. We can move all this stuff around later. So now I have three scrolls. So let's bring the scrolls over. Oh, see, that definitely looks like it belongs on our research bench. So let's stick that there. New layer, make another. New layer, make another. Stack of scrolls. If you go outside your bounds, which I don't know if we will by the time this is over, but I'll show you what to do about that. All right, control D to unselect everything, save it off. We have scrolls. What is this layer? This layer is the text on the paper. I'm going to merge that down. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to control Z to undo it on that image. And then I'm going to come back to this image, make a new layer, paste my papers in. Now I want my papers underneath my hammer because I want my hammer to look like it's holding those things down. One thing you should do is to save yourself a little bit of hassle later on is name all these layers not because now it's like which one's the hammer and it looks like in this tiny image this one is there you go so i'm going to move my papers which now i don't know which layer my papers are over a little bit like that if it covers up that detail it kind of looks cool like it actually looks like there's something on top and then i'm gonna go back to my hammer layer and pop that bad boy i don't know Right there is cool. What else did I have that I can use here? Papers. That's it. I didn't like my original image, my original background image. I'm not going to try and use that. I didn't really like any of this other stuff. I do need some good empire symbology. What's the word here? I don't know. I'm going to try and use this. I think this is, yes, it is. Okay, good. So let's see if we can't pop that on there and have it look okay. 
So I'm going to put it underneath all the crap I just pasted on top. What's layer four? I have no idea what layer four is. <laughs> Sometimes it's nothing. I'm just going to leave it for now because fine. All right. You can see A, that went the wrong spot. B, it doesn't look very good. And I can tell you part of the reason that is in a minute. <laughs> so I want it to be actually on top of those other, of this, this layer, yes. And I'm going to select just the section I want to make bigger for the sake of making it easier to drag this thing around. And we'll just make that, f Oop, I'm going to control Z that. It looks like I might have let go of shift while I was dragging. So, yeah, that looks beefy enough. It's an empire skull. And then I'm just going to try and line up this roughly with this in terms of where this line is meeting that image I just added. And then I'm also going to zoom out and make sure it looks like it's roughly centered. One thing you can do, because I have this fantastic tool here, is object align, center horizontally. Boom. All right, there you go. So I wasn't centered properly before. Now, the reason this one looks like this and the other one looks so stark is because this one has opacity set to 128. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to set opacity to wherever the heck it looks good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's go 128. Okay, there you go. Save that. So what do we need to do? One thing that looks a little off on this thing is that this image I just dropped in there, I think it probably needs some kind of outline. So what do you do about that? <laughs> you literally just go grab your tool, find a nice gray color that's going to suit. One thing I'm going to do for this actually is take my color picker tool. I'm going to go to the layer with this line here, which appears to be which this this one. Yes, this one, and I'm going to grab that gray color, the darkest one in there, that guy. And now I'm going to go back to that new layer I just created for putting an outline around that skull empire stock image, make it relatively skinny, and I'm just going to go all the way around and make that thing match as best as I can. I'll probably either at the end of this feather this line a tiny bit that did not go straight up and down feather this line a tiny bit or reduce the opacity on it just to kind of make it disappear into the background a bit better and one thing you might want to do also <laughs> is turn off all the layers and all the shit that you put on top because you're not doing yourself any real favors with all those while you're trying to draw an outline that's underneath so we were on layer 18 i don't know what layer 6 is Layer six was something that we did that was on top. Oh yeah, layer six, and I just know it was the stuff we did here. I'm gonna leave that on. Okay, so anyways, back to layer 18. We also don't need this other skull layer so that guy can go in the trash. All right, so literally back to what I was doing. I'm just gonna draw lines and I'm just gonna go all the way around here until I got this done. All right, I finally made it all the way around. So sometimes you'll get done with something like that and you'll be like, well, that, that doesn't look better. <laughs> and in that case, it's cool to either try some different stuff to make it look better or just delete it. So I'm going to try a few things. I can put it behind my image and I think it does look better behind it. Not as like consistent in terms of line width everywhere, but this is going to be underneath a bunch of other stuff. And then I'm going to go try and do an object feather object on it because it adds a little bit of variety. Now see that actually makes it, makes it kind of blend in better. I'm actually gonna put it back on top. See there's like a weird spot there I don't really like, but it is what it is. Another thing you can do is muck around with the opacity of this line as well. That has a benefit of letting some of the background show through, but that may or may not be what you want. So if I do that, yeah, I kind of like that better too. It's all just trial and error. Like you just have to figure out what tools you have available. There, that looks like a way better Empire Research Bench and it's consistent with what the rest of the Empire furniture is gonna look like. So 
I'm going to start naming these. These are papers. Enter. This is going to be book. Enter to save it down. That one was my pen. Probably pencil is more appropriate considering it's medieval times. It's my hammer. And this is going to help because I'm going to drag all these things around. This I'm calling beaker. It's just to add some kind of color pop to it. This is my scales. This one is mortar and pestle. Mortar slash pestle. Uh, this one, these were my scrolls. S scroll, these will all get merged down into one. Eh, maybe not. It's nice to keep these handy things around so that next time I make something that requires a scroll, like I can just come to this image and copy that that layer out of this image like I did to get these things in here. And one thing you'll note about all those, oh shit, that's scroll three. One thing you'll note about these images, these, these things I pasted in, is their outlines. Like they, none of them have a black outline. It's like gray, gray, something that matches like paper has this dark outline and then the hammer is a couple different colors, the book, so on and so forth. Like there's no black outlines there. And that's because they're in the middle of an image. They're not floating around off on their own. It's kind of like a tattoo. I have a lot of tattoos. You don't want to get tattooed and not get a black outline. It's just not going to hold up. And you see this happening in this day and age. And people that know something about tattoos just shake their heads. If you have that kind of tattoo and it did hold up, well, good for you. That's fine. <laughs> no offense intended, but uh, that was never my style. All right, so the book. Uh, where's the book? going to look right. Maybe they, we can make it look like they were reading the book. I think I spoke about this before. So I'm going to select that layer and then I'm going to turn it. See how I lost quality there? See how I got fuzzy? If I move it back, it's a little more distinct. If I turn it, the more you turn something, if I do it and then I do it, it just gets fuzzier. That's just, I don't know, some factor of what's going on with this image software. And I'm certainly not going to complain because this image software is free <laughs> and it's fantastic. I'm going to move the pencil somewhere down over here. I don't know. Okay. Now, what else do we have? We have a beaker. Kind of going to need that out of the way somewhere. Let's put it over here so I have room for my scrolls. Scales. I like the scales to be... Now, the scales are... And the beaker. The colors on those are a little too bold for the rest of this but that, you could also like run some effects on it like adjustments um, brightness contrast maybe I use this tool a lot but contrast I'm just gonna let it go I'm not gonna do anything with it <laughs> I'll just let it be bright mortar and pestle I could separate these and put the mortar somewhere else and have the pestle over here but I'm not gonna do that I like that I like the fact that that's kind of near the scales though because it's like, oh, I'm going to grind this stuff up, and then I'm going to take an exact weight, and blah, blah, blah. And then my scrolls, I'm just going to kind of move those down so that they fit on the image. And I like it that it looks like a pile of scrolls. I think that's cool. Okay, there you go. Look at that. That's a research bench. One thing that's desperately missing here, if we come make a new layer, put it underneath all that extra crap I just added, grab a nice... Uh, pretty dark gray. I'm going to grab a, the what is this called? Brush, the paintbrush, size three. Is that big enough? Mm, I'm going to go a little bit bigger. Let's go up to five. I'm going to do something like this. I'm just going to go around and add some little gray lines around these things. So you have to figure which way is the light coming from. And where would my shadow fall if these things are really sitting on here? You can also use the line drawer if you're trying to do a long one like this and you really want it to line up nicely. So something like that. Oh, back to this tool. Beaker. And this is underneath these things. So any color I draw on top of them actually ends up underneath them. And you don't see it. So for this, we want like that. I want these guys over here. Maybe over here. I'm just winging it because I'm going to feather this thing. So it kind of looks like a legit shadow. 
in the background or underneath all this stuff, just a shadow on the table. I might muck around with the opacity too. We want to make sure that this thing shows through it. So the hammer would definitely have a shadow. It would also have a shadow on top of the paper, but I'm not trying to be that particular. This paper probably wouldn't have that much of a shadow either, but maybe it's like flapped up or something. All right, so there's a shadow layer drawn in. I'm going to go to Effects, Object, Feather Object, and I'm going to feather it until I think it looks cool. And, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. There you go. I'm going to save it. All right, so I'm going to call that my finished table. So what I'm going to do then, and that's my south view. I'm going to go ahead and save that off as a PNG. South PNG, what is this? This is Empire, oh, there you go. Flatten that out. I'm going to hit Control Z to unflatten it. I'm going to hit Save again. And I'm going to find my PDN that I was just working with, which appears to be this one. And I'm going to save it because we need to make a mask for this. That's the last bit. I did a separate mask video last time for the sword. I'm just going to try and incorporate it here, even though this has gotten pretty stinking long. <laughs> so I'm going to make a new layer in the background. I'm going to go ahead and do a... Mm, yeah, we just, actually, we just need black. We need a fill tool. I'm going to fill it completely with black. So what do we want to be recolored? If this thing's made out of granite, it needs to look different than if it's made out of slate. Same for jade, so on and so forth, right? And we want the table itself to be recolored. So how can I get that? How can I have the table be red, but it's going to need obvious cutouts? Because masks in RimWorld, whatever you want to be recolored needs to be red, as I said dated in the last much simpler, much shorter masking video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my select tool and I'm going to go to my outline and I'm going to select it. I'm also going to select mm, these bits to make sure that my legs get incorporated in this. And I'm going to go grab my square select. I'm going to do this, say add union instead of replace and then I'm going to make sure we have those little bits selected in there like that and like that all right so now we have the whole table selected but we can't just color that in red because we've put all this crap on top of the table and we don't want all this crap to get masked because that's not going to look good <laughs> it's not going to look as good so what do we do I'm going to try a few things I'm going to grab my select tool I'm going to click this one here, subtract, and let's see if we can't make something happen. So I'm going to click my first scroll. Huh, look at that. It unselected just the scroll. I'm going to select my second scroll, which seems to be this one, and my third scroll seems to be that one. All right, well, that went pretty well. Over here, I'm going to try the same on the mortar and pestle. Look at that. Bam. Scales. This is actually going way easier than I thought. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do it on the beaker. See, it went a little overboard on the beaker. So since that select is the last thing I did, and you can see it's still active here, I'm going to start reducing my tolerance a bit. No, I went too far, clearly, it, because it started unselecting things in the middle. But there's a few spots out here that I still want it to not have removed from my selection. So I'm just going to keep going with this a bit and see if I can get lucky there. I think that's good. So what I'm going to do to reselect this bit in the center is I'm going to go to my lasso tool, my add union tool, and I'm going to just go around in a circle like that. And I just did something really stupid. <laughs> oh yeah, so what I should have had that was this. So I need to undo what I did last, make sure that my subtract is active, and then I need to do the same thing I just did. Again, this is just a whole lot of trial and error if you, if you don't know what you're doing, and I still feel a lot like I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so we can leave subtract tool on. We can go find that pencil, and we need our selection tool, or sorry, our magic wand tool. So again, it's uh it's gone way too overzealous. 
and I'm just going to keep reducing my tolerance until I think it has something that looks decent. That looks okay. So I do want, mm, what do I want selected here that isn't? <laughs> I'm going to go to my union tool. I'm going to go to, oh, don't do that. I'm going to hit control Z. I'm going to hit enter to lock in that last select. And then I'm going to go to add union. So I need to reselect some of the background that got unselected there. So I'm just going to use this little tool and manually do it. Now, if something's black, it can't be masked because it's black. So you don't really have to worry too much about like black outlines and stuff like that. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Mm, what to do there? I'm just going to leave it. We'll see. It'll look fine in game. All right. So anyways, back to my magic wand, back to subtract. We're onto the book. All right. Now you can see when I click the book, it, it only did a little section. That's because we dump this tolerance down so low. So I'm going to keep increasing tolerance until it has most of that blue selected again. And if you go over 70, usually that's, that's not a good thing, <laughs> but Hey, in this case, maybe it worked out. I'm going to leave it at 70 and call it, call it decent. This little tick might look weird when you actually get in game. If you see something where there's like one pixel sticking out, let's see how high we can go with this. Maybe we can get away with going over 70. All right, that looks good. Let's leave it there. Okay, so that just leaves the hammer. Back to my subtract to subtract from selection and magic wand. Click the hammer. Now you see it's getting way too overzealous. So we actually need to reduce our tolerance down. And sometimes on something like this, it has two colors. You might have to click here and then click here. Also selecting, like when I click this magic wand, it's considering the exact color on the spot that I clicked. So you'd get a different result if you click over here or if you click over here because you got a much lighter color, a much darker color. You also would get a much potentially different result if you click down here because you have some reddish brown tones regardless though what i just did happened to work out for me so back to the paper now i'm about to select all the paper 70 all right there you go beautiful so now what we have is everything that we want to have masked is selected so i'm going to go to that new layer at the very bottom second from the bottom over my black layer i'm going to select pure red all red, no other colors. I'm going to use my fill tool. I'm going to fill it in. I'm going to hit control D to unselect and I'm going to save. And then I'm going to turn off all these other layers in here that we no longer need because we just want to see our mask. There you go. I'm going to save. Then I'm going to do a file, save as. Now I know from experience, what we want is just to stick an M on the end of this because we're masking a workbench, something rotatable, a building, so the layer mask will work right. Or sorry, the image mask, texture mask will work right if you just name it without the underscore M like I did last time in the image for the sword. So that's that. That was a long video. I'm going to come in here and just undo all this stuff and get this guy set back. I do Y, turn off my background, save. I want this to be named exactly as it was before. So just as a PDN file. So I know when I'm browsing my folders, what's in there. And that's that. That's how you make, you take an existing image, manipulate it around, monkey with it enough to make it something totally different. I mean, it's still a table, obviously, <laughs> but now it's a research bench and it started out, if we just, uh, actually I can't copy this. We can actually copy the outline, go back to the image we just created and I'll paste it over. So this is what we started with. This is what we ended with. I'm gonna get rid of that. So there you go. If you have any comments, leave them. Again, I'm not an image dude. I don't pretend to be. I'm just trying to help Alex out, I'm trying to help Alex learn how to make images. And I learned this on my own. I figured it out by doing it for my mods. <laughs> That's it. 
Leave a like if you enjoyed, if you got something out of it. This bad boy is one long video. But uh, hey, there you go. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, wait, one thing. You would also need to do a reverse image of this, like where it's facing up. So meaning like this is the vanilla one. So this is the south one, which we just did. There's also a north one where they just kind of reverse stuff. So really, I would just move all my stuff around, find that skull image, this dude, and the layer that I put behind it. Mer it don't do that. Never merge layers that you've mucked around with the opacity. It causes issues. Anyway, you can just like flip this guy horizontal. No, nope, wrong way. Vertical. <laughs> flip it vertical and then like shift it back up. Oh, look, so now the table's facing the other way. And then you could just move all this other stuff around as well. Like your book, would you'd want it over here. You might have to redo your shadow layer because if you move stuff around, you're just going to want to redo the shadow layer. But it was really easy to do. And these other images, you can flip like the little book layer. and These other layers, you can flip them without losing any quality, unlike when I rotated them in a circle. But flipping them, it maintains quality. It just puts them in a different spot. So to do the other views of this, that's how you'd go about doing that. But for now, I'm going to let it go. This has gone on too long. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time.